open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Bless, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in his hand, join in this festival procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. rise. Congregation may be seated. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, good morning. good morning. Blessed Palm Sunday to each and all of you this morning and to all of you who are joining us online, live streaming on Facebook. Uh, good morning to you and blessed Palm Sunday. Uh, there are a few things going on this next week. We got a wonderful a bunch of uh, worship opportunities for you to be a part of. Monday, Thursday uh, is at 7 p.m. Just note that Monday, or Monday, Thursday, 
Thursday, April 1st, 7 p.m. And that'll be a uh, communion will be shared, the Lord's Supper will be shared, and we have 14 of our students who will be receiving their first communion that night. And so I invite you to come and be a part of that as we go to the upper room with Jesus and we uh, experience, uh, listen to how it is that he washed the disciples' feet and gave them the new commandment that we are to love one another as he has loved us. And then on Good Friday, uh, we walk to the cross and we hear Jesus' words from the cross and prepare ourselves for the coming Easter morning. And again, that service is at 7 p.m. as well. Um, and then Easter morning, uh, we have a number of different opportunities that are for which most of you, I hope, are already signed up. And so 7 a.m. is led by our youth, and that's uh, uh, already filled, and 9 a.m. also. Uh, but 11 o'clock, uh, we're about half full, and uh, people are starting to get signed up for that as well. So if you haven't yet, you're welcome uh, to do so. Just go to the church website and find an email or, that we sent you about that. Uh, with just a little note, too, there uh, will be some coffee and uh, sweet rolls and uh, muffins and some things available between those services for a little bit of time together. So I encourage you to um, get see some people maybe you haven't seen in a while and get the chance to say hi and good morning. Another announcement that we'd like to make has to do with the food shelf. This is the last uh, opportunity you have uh, uh, to get uh, bring some gifts for sharing for that, and so please do so. Put it on the Mountain of Love out in the comments and uh, give a gift that will make a difference in the lives of those in our community. And if you haven't got it yet, this next week will be all the incentive you need to order some plants for your yard and other places. Uh, go to the uh, Gertens website and put in 192 in the store piece, and you're going to uh, be at a Peace Lutheran page for which all of the things that you order will uh, be a 30% will go to the church and to outreach this coming summer, uh, like the corn feed and the parade and a bunch of other things that we're doing. So it's a great opportunity to support the church, plus get some very beautiful plants. They'll be delivered here to the church. You can pick them right up. You don't have to even go out and... And uh, they're very, very nice. And then lastly, uh, we have a concert coming up in May. Um, and uh, that's Mitch Hall. If you have not... No? Yes? Oh, go ahead. Doreen, you're all set. I was stealing your, uh, your speech. Sorry. One second. Un momento, señorita. El... Yes. This is a concert that we actually had planned for last year, but it turns out the pandemic came on board and we had to cancel it. And so now we're finally able to have Mitch Hall here. Um, it's going to be him and his ten Tennessee trio. It's going to be an outdoor concert here at the church, uh, 3 to 5 in the afternoon on May 22nd and Saturday. So bring a chair and a blanket. There will be some refreshments and everything here. Tickets are going to be $18 pre-bought and 20 at the door. And again, this is money that will be used for us for some summer activities. But we would love to have it. And if you've never heard Mitch Hall, he is Johnny Cash reincarnated. He is unbelievable. Um, it's really a great event to come to. Love to have you come. And the outreach team will be selling tickets here in the back between now and then, or else you can always contact the church. Order them online. Yeah. Or online. Wonderful. Super. Um, well, that's all the announcements for this morning. And so uh, we'd, uh, anyone else have an announcement before we move into our worship together? Good morning. This is for the people that are worshiping at home and are still going to be doing so at Easter. We will have communion pickup here um, Thursday and Friday. Um, 9 to 4, Thursday and Friday, and then Saturday morning from 10 to 11. So you can pick up your bread and worship at home and have communion um, with us during those services. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right. I invite you to stand if you are able. Let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we begin this day, um, we, are, we are brought into the gates of Jerusalem. We are within the crowd. Uh, we are amongst those who are watching our Lord come in, 
on the a colt, the foal of a donkey, and, and with that we're raising our palms and praise. We thank you, Lord, that we have this time to worship, and we ask now that uh, your spirit might be upon us as we continue in song and in leading. In your name we pray. Amen. Um, share the peace with each other socially, responsibly. Responsibly social. Please remain standing as we sing together. Let's join in the confession and forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God, bestows upon them the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to be seated and the children come forward. guys how's it going all right who knows what day we're celebrating today 
What is it? Palm Sunday. What do we celebrate on Palm Sunday? What's going on today? Yeah, Barry, what are you? Close, not Bethlehem, Jerusalem, but you're right. So Jesus rides in on a donkey into Bethlehem, and all the people are waving palm branches, welcoming him in. Super excited. I've got a really, really important question for you guys. If you could ride on any animal, what would it be? What do we? A tiger? That's a good one, Leo. What else? You can just say him. What would you ride on? A lion? No one else? I would ride on a bee. I think it would be cool. Anyways, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about today. I just think it's fun. So, Palm Sunday, super cool, super important. Um, But first, I need to tell you guys a little bit about myself. I don't really share this a whole lot, um, but I'm a bit of a genius inventor. Um, Very, very talented, very smart. Um, I make things that I'm sure you guys have heard of before, you've seen before. Uh, Let me give you an example. Um, Have you guys ever been like really smelly and really hungry at the same time? I think some of you are lying. But let's think about this. You're smelly, you're hungry. What are the two things you need? You need food and you need a shower real bad. But Mark, you can't eat food in the shower. All right? That's where the umbrella plate comes in. All right? You go in the shower. Oh, my gosh. Shower, shower, shower. Sandwich, sandwich, sandwich. Shower, shower, shower. Sandwich. All right? Thank you. Uh, This is, Target told me it's a maybe. Um, So keep your eyes out. uh, $200. So, uh, and it's very hard to close, I'm learning. Uh, All right, we'll just worry about that later. So, anyways, genius, right? Can we all agree on that? All right. So, I was sitting up late last night thinking about Palm Sunday, and all of a sudden, like a lightning bolt struck the top of our house, and the ideas just went straight into my brain, and I stayed up all night working on this new invention. Um, And it is an alarm clock for Palm Sunday. So, I need... Can someone be a volunteer for me? Will you do it? Awesome. All right. I need you to lay down right here and pretend you're asleep. And this is where the Palm Sunday alarm clock comes into play. Oh, you're sleeping peacefully. You're sleeping peacefully. Oh, Hosanna. Hosanna. He is here. Hosanna. And it wakes you up every morning. Thank you. Very good. You want to try it? Hosanna. Hosanna! Would that wake you up? No, it's really loud. The, the alarm clock is screaming, Hosanna! Hosanna! It would work. It's a great idea. But where this idea comes from is on Palm Sunday, we get to celebrate Jesus riding into Jerusalem. You know what we get to celebrate every other day of the year? Jesus coming to each one of you guys. Jesus comes to us every day and loves us every day. So that's where the Palm Sunday alarm clock is so good because it reminds you every day, Hosanna, Jesus is coming for you today. He loves you today. He's your God today. So while we celebrate today, we get to celebrate every day. So uh, be on the lookout. This is a lot more higher end than Target. Uh, I don't know what stores that would be because... I'm not very smart. eBay. Yes, it will be on eBay. This probably will pop up on eBay earlier today. So as we celebrate Palm Sunday, I just want you guys to know that Jesus comes to you every day. So will you all pray with me? Uh, Dear Lord, we thank you for inventions, Mark's brilliance, and... Uh, But we thank you for how you come to us every day. Amen. All right. I've got the best Easter candy up here. You may grab one. You can grab one.
bring one for Keith. The first reading is from Zechariah 9, 9 through 12. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the, all the nations. His rule will extend from sea to shining sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return for, to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now, I announce that you will restore twice as much to you. The second reading is is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature, God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name, that is above every name, that every, that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Christ Jesus is Lord, to glory of God the Father. Let you stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel is from John, the 12th chapter, beginning with the 12th verse. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. And now the crowd that was with him when he had called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. The gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. I assume you want these in order. Yes? Okay. Might be more interesting the other way. Well, this morning, uh, the, I have a, the title is A Good Entrance. Who doesn't like a good entrance? Now, imagine this. Uh, you have to use your imaginations this morning. I want to have you picture yourself at TCF Bank Football Stadium, okay? 
Now, you have the best seats in the house, so picture wherever you think those are and put yourself there. Now, picture yourself also that it's a beautiful, sunny autumn day. And the stands are packed. Everyone is wearing the team colors, maroon and gold. The crowd is pumped. They're ready to cheer on the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Is that pretty close? Okay. And it's the Big Ten championship game to go to the Rose Bowl. Stop that laughing. It could happen. Now the marching band is there too, and it strikes up the fight song. Minnesota. Everybody, hats off to thee. And at the end it goes, Minnesota, Minnesota. Go Gophers. The crowd goes wild. And at the height of that moment, in comes the team, the football team. Huge. Strong, fast, all wearing those shiny gold helmets with clean, fresh uniforms. The team breaks through the paper banner and runs onto the field, flanked by University of Minnesota cheerleaders doing handsprings and backflips, and the pom-pom team is doing pom-pom stuff. And there's a fog machine laying down a blanket of heavenly-looking cloud that they come in looking all in their glory, and everybody is singing the fight song again. Now, that's an entrance. What an entrance! Wisconsin just quits and leaves the field. (laughs) It could happen. What a difference a good entrance makes. Today is Palm Sunday. It's the day of good entrances, good beginnings. The word of God is read at the door. The children march in waving their palms. They sing a special song for us. We all join in and all glory, loud and honor. A good entrance to a good day. This Sunday we celebrate Jesus' triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem where we, like them, then shout out, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Blessed is the king of Israel. King! How about that? They call him king. Well, some would say that this would probably be the high point of Jesus' earthly ministry, that this was the pinnacle of it all. It was Passover in the city, and there were many people who were packed in there, and they came out to see him. Not only that, but they turned out to see him because they recognized him as a miracle worker and as a teacher and had heard many things about them. And if you caught that last part of the gospel reading, talked about the raising of Lazarus and the exceptional enthusiasm that they might want to see this as well. Can you imagine what that must have been like? And the Jewish leaders, they were worried. Jesus' popularity was becoming too much. His uh, um, power was increasing. And they said, you know, he's getting too much going on. The whole world is coming to him. Well, you and I know, sometime after this, of course, and through our experience, we know that this day isn't the high point of what Jesus does. The triumphal entry is the fulfillment of the prophecy, a humble king mounted on a donkey. And the grand scheme of this true high point, though, is in the days to come. It is when Jesus then will go to the cross, his death, and then his resurrection, will be the high point for each and every one of us. This triumphal entry, though, today on Palm Sunday connects Holy Week together to Easter for each of us. And probably the point of the whole thing for me is this. Coming into Jerusalem, we see Jesus coming willingly. He comes willingly to lay his life down for his people. It's helpful then to get a little bit of background, I think, about some of this. And and I learned a couple things, too, about how uh, what these things mean. Jesus enters Jerusalem on a young donkey with these palm branches. And they have symbolic importance. Why the donkey? Why the palm branches? Well, for one, Jesus riding in on the donkey fulfills that prophecy of Zechariah that you heard read in the Old Testament for today. 
The donkey symbolizes peace. Now, most of us, when we think of a horse riding in, um, that would be used for cavalry charges and those things. A donkey <coughs> instead comes in it is used in peacetime. Jesus enters Jerusalem not as a conqueror, but rather as the prince of peace. Horse-mounted soldiers would come riding towards you and you'd be uh, filled with fear. Uh, horses and chariots were the Abrams tanks of their day. Fill the people with fear. In contrast, the slow-moving donkey, and guess what? It's not even just a donkey, but rather the colt or a foal of a donkey that comes in. (coughs) You see Jesus' humility in all of this. Well, in the ancient world, it would be something uh, for a leader, a king, a military leader, to do such a thing. It shows weakness. It shows uh, that you might be, uh, that they could easily overthrow you. Instead, Jesus comes in willingly and in humbleness uh, before the people. But what about those palm branches? Well, there's several references of palm branches in the Bible. Psalm 92. (coughs) Excuse me. Hey, guess what? What'd you put in here anyways? <laughs> Sorry about that. So those palm branches, Psalm ninety two twelve, the righteousness flourishes like a palm tree. Palm trees are a symbol of the righteousness of the people of God of Israel. That symbolism then is laid down then before the one who comes. Also there's the tradition of welcoming new kings into the city as a token of gladness and welcome, the new king comes into the city. <coughs> and lastly, it is that this prophecy that is written, uh, there's a little bit more to it than that. Um, John does not quote the whole verse, but there is a symbolism here in this, and that is that it is um, that this, this uh, new king coming in also brings in... Um, Not only peace, but salvation. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey. So Jesus does this today for us. (coughs) Excuse me. One of the things I, I think we need to think about here today is that the question about what is it that Jesus is triumphing over? What is it that he is conquering? And what enemies does he defeat? Think about it just a moment. You see, he's victorious over sin. He defeats death. He conquered the devil. All of this he willingly did when he went to the cross and died there for us, for our sins. That's what the triumph is about today. Not the grandeur of royalty, or the power of earthly kingdom. But he did it for you and for myself. It was some time ago, and I went to a a talk, you know, talks at church. And um, it was in a room like this, and there was a baptismal font, but it was right down there. And it was in the evening, and it was darkened in the room. And we were seated all around like you folks are. And the man got up to speak, and he stood at the baptismal font to do that. And he described Palm Sunday and the triumphal entry into the city. And in the tradition of the church, uh, the palm branches are to be saved for a year and then (coughs) crushed and uh, burned into ash to be used on Ash Wednesday. And so right there at the baptismal font, he takes last year's uh, palm fronds, crushes them up, they're dry, and then he sets fire to them and then crushes those ashes. There was something very powerful in what he did. He took the joy of Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry, as we say, 
He took the shouts of hosannas, and he turned that then and reminded all of us that it is in the ash of our sinfulness that Jesus comes. And then he pointed and he says, and now just look that way towards the cross. He says, that is where we are headed. Because the same people who said, Hosanna, Hosanna, are the same ones that will say, crucify him, crucify him. And so that's you and I in our lives. Because we easily say praise, but we also know that we say the other as well. So bless us now as we enter Holy Week and we walk to the cross and to Jesus' death and the hope of a resurrection to come. Amen. I invite you to stand. Let's join in singing. Let's confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Would anyone like to share a a yay God this morning? And uh, if you're online with us on Facebook, Uh, You can type a yay God into the chat section there, and uh, we'll hopefully pick that up and uh, share that with the congregation as well. We have... I got a yay God. Uh, My family, Sarah, uh, my kids and I, and my Aunt Lily just got back from going to Kentucky to see the Ark exhibit. And it was really cool uh, seeing the ark in full size, and it's just breathtaking. So if anyone gets a chance to get down to Kentucky and they want to see the the ark encounter, was really something else. Wonderful. Thank you. Yay, God, for that. Um, This 
Alicia got us for Bob and Kathy Rickenberg. They are out of town at a family wedding. Um, but if Kathy was here, she would tell you the flowers on the altar are in memory of her daughter, Stacy. Yes. Red tulips were her favorite. Yes. Um, and so, yay God for Stacy's life, albeit it was very short. And yay God for the Rickenberg family. And then also, Emily had her surgery last week and it went well. So, thank you for her prayers and yay God for that. Amen. Yep. Yeah, yay God. <laughs> I just want to say thanks for the prayers for Curtis and Rachel. They were in a head-on collision. It'll be two weeks tomorrow, and Rachel had surgery two days ago, and she's doing well. Yeah, God. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say yay God for the FFA program. Um, all three of my girls are a part of that at the Howard Lake School District. And um, it, just in the last couple of weeks here, Michaela did some interviewing for uh, state production placement and was one of the top four finalists. So very proud moment for me. Oh, yay God. Yeah. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Anyone else have a yay God they'd like to share this morning? Yay, God, for the kids. They did an awesome job processing. They had no idea they were going to be doing that, and they, they just did awesome. So yay, God, for our kids, and don't forget to come up front to practice our song for April. Great. Thank you. Yay, God. Anybody else? Bill. Congratulations to the Watertown Gymnastics team. All right, First yeah. In the state. Yay! Yay, God. Okay. Anybody else? Luke was going to say, Yeah, so ditto. All right. Well, we'll continue with our worship service. Uh, I just also wanted to say thank you and ye God for the gifts that you share, your offering, and we just thank you very much for doing that. Uh, for some of you who have uh, transferred over to have a regular online gift, that has really been super. Thank you so much for doing that. It's uh, very helpful, and uh, our gifts, the gifts you give have been very generous, and we appreciate it. We'll continue with our worship then as we uh, go into special music here. Okay, ready? Last night I lay sleeping, there came a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the children singing. And then 
I thought my dream was changed, the streets no longer rang. Hushed were the glad hosannas, the little children sang. The sun grew dark with mystery, the morn was cold and chill. As a shadow of a cross arose upon a lonely hill, as a shadow of a cross arose you to stand, please. <clears throat> Let's pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you this morning those that we know of who need comfort and healing in their lives, those in our church family like Renata and Robert and Troy and Chris, for the Pollocks and, their, and Charlie, for Doris and Joan and Greg for Emily and for Rachel and Curtis. Heavenly Father, too, uh, for friends and family and those that we know of, and John, and also John, and Mary Beth, and for Karen, and for Rick, and for Brian and Marlene and Kyle, for Mary Lou, and for Jennifer, Albert and Kate, Jennifer and Leroy, for Cindy and Chris and Sherry, for Jim and Gail, and Keith, and Jim, and Eric, and others we mention in our hearts at this time. And then, Lord, for all of the ministries that we are partners with all around the world in a variety of different ways, we thank you for their good work and ask that we might be stronger partners in the days ahead. Lord, too, bless all those who serve in the military for their gift of, of duty and responsibility. We thank you for them and ask that you keep them safe and return them to us once again. For those in law enforcement and first responders, Lord, we ask that you protect them and and keep them safe in these difficult times. 
for our brothers and sisters in Christ in churches all around our area here, Lord. We thank you for our partnership and ministry. Now a blessing, too, upon all those who are remembering the loss of a loved one this day. For these prayers and so many more, Lord, we lift before you and thank you for the prayer that you gave us to share. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing. ask our ushers if they would to dismiss us by rows and so we receive the sending go in peace and serve the lord we will